What's up, founders, and welcome back to the In Demand podcast, where we talk all about how to reach your very first 1 million in ARR. I'm your host, Asia Arangio, and I'm the founder of Demand Maven, where we work with early stage SaaS companies on reaching their very first growth milestones. Let's do this. Is your product a painkiller or is it actually a vitamin? We are going to break it all down today. I am so pumped because this is actually something that I talk about all the time and I've just never actually written it down or talked about it really like formally anywhere else. And on top of that, I just had a bowl of Cap'n Crunch and I'm feeling extra. So, all right, painkillers versus vitamins. I actually don't even remember now where I have heard this in my marketing career, but there is this concept that your product probably falls into one or the other camp, depending, of course, on the customer that you're talking to. Different segments have different needs, of course. They have different reasons for ultimately hiring and trying and becoming a customer of your product. However, There are some segments that view your product either as a vitamin or a painkiller. And then also there's some general markets that view it that way too. And we're going to talk about what those scenarios might be. Generally, broadly speaking though, the product probably falls into one of two camps, unless of course we start looking at different types of segments upon which they might actually view it differently. All this to say, it's so important to know where your product falls in your customer's eyes. So what's a painkiller versus vitamin? All right, a painkiller. A product that is a painkiller is a product that ultimately kills a pain. It solves a very particular specific pain or set of pains for a person, a customer. A painkiller is exactly what it entails. Um, If you were to think about being given the red pill or the blue pill, one pill might be a painkiller, but another other pill might be a vitamin. So painkillers are really all about, you've got a problem, here, take this painkiller. You've got a pain to alleviate, here's Advil, Tylenol, whatever it is. But from a product perspective and from a SaaS perspective, if I really struggle with sending async feedback to my team, my painkiller is Loom. If I struggle with all of the other solutions out there that host virtual meetings, Like Google Hangouts, for example, does not work very well on my computer and also with my internet connection, but Zoom does. Zoom is my painkiller. Zoom is the thing that I use to kill that pain of, oh, I can't like have quality virtual meetings because everything else isn't great. Um, So Zoom is the painkiller to that problem, to that pain that I have. Painkiller also might feel like it's a little aggressive whenever you hear it because you're thinking, oh, well, I don't know if my customer really has that big of a pain. I would say if there's any problem, any frustration or struggle that they are feeling, we can think of your product as a painkiller. Like it doesn't have to be this like big giant like, oh God, you know, this thing I'm trying to fix and it sucks and my life sucks because I don't have this product and so I need my pain killed. Like it's not quite so dramatic. It can actually it can actually be simple. You know, it's it's fine. Um, it's such a contrast though to a vitamin. A vitamin is a product or solution, either one, that one wouldn't necessarily buy because of a pain, but instead because of a better version of themselves, of a very strong desire. So vitamins are products, again, that um, fulfill a deep desire. A painkiller is a product that solves a particularly painful problem. So Examples of vitamins in SaaS are, they're actually not quite as rare as you might think that they are, but I will say more often than not, we always try to position products as painkillers because painkillers are things that people will pay almost any amount of money for, Um, maybe more so than vitamins in the software world. And I say that in the software world more specifically because certainly there are examples of vitamins in other industries and other um, product types where people would pay fortunes for them. (laughs) But in terms of SaaS, um, it's just really rare to see a SaaS product truly positioned as a vitamin. And this is generally why I make the recommendation that 
we really don't want to be a vitamin if we can help it. However, if there is no way to help that, then we have a particular um, positioning challenge. And also we've got to think about marketing and go to market in a particular way. And I'll explain what I mean by that in just a second. But okay, so let's go back to vitamins versus painkillers. So again, but this is contextual. So this is based off of how the customer actually sees it and experiences it. Um, We could use broad strokes to start. So generally speaking, what is my overall pain or extreme desire? Although, you know, to be fair, though, I would still say even with an extreme desire, there's probably some underlying problem or struggle or pain that that is within there in some kind of way. Um, But even so, with a painkiller, again, a product that solves a pretty particularly painful problem uh, and versus a vitamin, a product that solves um, or uh, gives someone the deep desire, it fulfills a desire for them. And generally speaking, we always want to position as a painkiller uh, because people will pay quite a lot to solve pains, things that are particularly uh, problematic, um, things that are frustrating, hard, uh, expensive, time intensive, um, things that are just generally annoying and no one wants to have to do it this way anymore. And oh my gosh, please bail me out because it sucks. Um, More people will pay for that faster than they will pay to buy a better version of themselves, aka fill a um, overwhelming desire for something. There are some that I would argue, you know, I'm using desire language. Um, If you're from the jobs to be done world, or if you know jobs to be done, then you know that desired outcomes are certainly a part of the circumstances that might trigger someone having a particular job and then, of course, wanting to hire a product to solve that job. Probably because the circumstances are actually indeed painful, but they have desires. And so apologies in advance if that language is confusing. But just so you know, like when we think about it in that way, we're probably still thinking about the product in terms of a painkiller. But let me give you some examples. Okay, so so I I gave, I mentioned like painkillers. There's Zoom, so maybe I'm not able to I'm coming from previous solutions. So I used to use Google Hangouts and it just did not, it just not work very well. Um, It's actually quite buggy. And so I'm like, okay, like I need to be able to have virtual meetings. I got to be able to record. I got to be able to do all this stuff. It would be better if I just had something that was more reliable, stable, actually worked well on my internet connection. So Zoom is my solution of choice. Um, it, It solved a pain for me. We have gone through tons of project management solutions and I've, I've used to use Asana back in the day. Um, but then I got introduced to Notion and, What I discovered was um, what I didn't like about Asana was I I couldn't actually build my own infrastructure. Like I couldn't actually, like not only could I not build my own infrastructure, but I was trying to use it almost like a notion where I was like storing information in there and things got so messy, you couldn't find stuff. And then I got introduced to Notion where Notion is basically like, oh, you, you already have in your mind what kind of system you want to build. Use Notion to build it with our databases, with our building blocks, with our pages. Um, you know, build like your perfect PM system and also documentation all in Notion. And it was just so cool because I was like, oh, yes, like this is, it's fulfilling the need um, to, I think I was like using Google Docs and like Asana. Google Docs would hold my SOPs and Asana was our like, you know, project management system, obviously. But it was just such like an aha moment of, oh my gosh, I can just do all of that inside of Notion. And it was amazing. Uh, But that was a particular problem that I had. Now, did I have some desires? Yeah, like I had this desire to like feel organized. I had this desire to, um, there were were certain requirements I had, like I needed to be able to, um, you know, do very basic task management and like, you know, all kinds of other things. Those were desires that I had for sure. Um, But the pain was actually really what made me consider a solution, a new solution, a different one, and caused me to switch. Vitamins. Okay, so those are some examples of painkillers. And I'm sure that, Nine times out of ten, like your product is probably going to be in the painkiller select in, in the painkiller section, and if it's not, we probably can still position it that way. But vitamins and SAS, like I said, are they are a little bit rare because uh, it's it's like a true SAS vitamin is like you might not think of them that way until you experience them. But I'll give you an example. I was talking to a founder recently, and I would consider his product to be a vitamin. Um, and not in a bad way. Like it's not necessarily bad to have a product position that way. It's just, it might just be a little bit slower and, or there might, there's just different challenges. And on top of that, like we just have to think about go-to market just very differently. But anyway, um, so vitamins, uh, he's got this product and this product is, it's the kind of product that you only really 
consider after you've already had a very big problem. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a security, it's like a breach security platform. It's the type of platform that you would use to like identify potential breach risk across an entire tech landscape or ecosystem within an organization. Um, so any, any firm or platform in the security space, depending on the nature of how customers use it or what triggers them to find it, could very well be a vitamin, actually, because what we find in anything that has long-term risk that may or may not actually ever happen, anytime we have a product in that arena, people really only buy it either after they've already had a problem, which in that case, it's a painkiller for them because they've already had a very painful thing happen to them. Maybe they had a breach or maybe they weren't GDPR compliant and they got sued or something happened to them that made them like, oh crap, we got to like make sure that never happens again. But for the vast majority of people who don't have that experience, that product is actually a vitamin because they haven't experienced the problem, which to, you know, it could be certainly argued that they are unaware and therefore we should not market to them. But um, the, the truth and the reality of it is, well, the vast majority of the market is unaware which means that you can never force people to care about the problem, but you might need to market the problem a little bit more heavily. So from a vitamin perspective, people only, uh, so you'd, you'd almost have to say like, you know, managing risk and mitigating risk is a core value of mine. And by buying this product, I am a better person because I am, um, and I am also a safer person and I'm buying future safety and also present safety as opposed to reacting to a problem or a pain that is happening right now or has happened in the past, which is a very different mindset of purchasing software. There's so anything in the area uh, or the arena of we are preventing or mitigating future pain or future risk is probably a vitamin. So so if we were to break down vitamins, for example, like let's think about a literal vitamin, like vitamin D or um, your multivitamin every day. You're not taking that vitamin probably because like you have like a literal problem, like, like there is something that you need medicated. You're taking that vitamin because you want to prolong your health, like or you want, you want good health. Um, you might want to um, create longevity in your life. And also there might be some, there might be some deficiencies you're trying to correct, which, okay, now it's a painkiller. But for the most part, when you take a vitamin, you are really buying a better version of yourself. And you're also buying your future self. You're saying, future self, you're going to be so glad that I now took this vitamin today. And you are really, you are investing in the future as opposed to investing necessarily in the present. That's not to say that all vitamins are this way, but it's definitely in the, um, okay, I am going to buy this future version of myself and this better version of myself. And that's what really a vitamin does. And the SaaS perspective, it's the same, it's relatively the same exact thing. Um, We see it the most in like risk industries and or security industries where um, you're selling something to someone that they have to buy the better version of themselves and or they have to love their future selves or their future company more than the present, which is hard. That's a tough sell because humans are naturally, like we are designed for instant gratification. We are designed for instant dopamine hits. Um, Like we love the dopamine and the the serotonin. However, buying a vitamin, that uh, buying a platform that is ultimately positioned as a vitamin, um, you've really got to sell the long-term dopamine hit. (laughs) And that uh, that can actually be, that can feel very challenging for sure. But that's an example of a product that is positioned as a vitamin. Now, again, some products, the context changes and based off of the customer looking at it. So a customer who has already experienced a breach or getting sued or um, you know, insurance totally falls into vitamins as well. Um, but anyone who has paid for those kinds of things um, and has had a previous bad experience, they are buying that security platform or whatever it is because they had a bad experience and it was bad and it was awful. Um, and they never want to experience that ever again. So 
they are still buying their future selves, but they are coming from a place of pain. So the product is now a painkiller more than it is a vitamin. It's maybe a little bit both. But this is how we think about positioning and framing a product, whether it's a painkiller or a vitamin, depending on, of course, who is looking at it and their experiences. Okay, so why does all of this matter? The reason why this matters is because, well, one, you really want to understand if your product is ultimately a painkiller or a vitamin in the eyes of your customer. Chances are you're probably a painkiller. However, if there are scenarios where your product is a vitamin, you need to totally change up your your, uh, messaging, possibly your positioning, and then also the way that you run campaigns, the way that you talk about the product, the way that you attract and nurture customers is fundamentally different. Because again, with vitamins, you are selling a better, safer, more secure version of themselves in the future than they are today. And the future might be the long future, it might be the short future, but it's still the future. It's not necessarily something that is going to instantly relieve their pain right now because they might not be feeling that pain. Um, So again, this is, we're preventing, we're either preventing future pain or we are um, creating like a better future version of you that you're now buying into. But that is by far and away completely different than painkiller messaging, which is, man, you got this problem and it sucks. Um, You shouldn't have to deal with this problem anymore. Here's our solution. Here's how it solves that problem. And here are all the ways that you are going to feel so much better after you get this problem solved. By the way, come to my TED talk, you know, like whatever. Um, So painkiller messaging, you probably have already seen this over and over and over again. You've seen this on some of the most exceptional SaaS websites with incredible copy uh, that speak to pains. But when you come across a vitamin, uh, a SaaS company that is a vitamin and they know that they're a vitamin and they're like, we're going to get the best copywriters and thinkers and strategists to help us really make sure we nail this. You can feel it because in a way you're kind of like, man, this vitamin seems dope. I should buy it to ensure that future Asia is going to be great um, and that she's going to love today Asia for having done this. (laughs) Um, So again, like insurance falls into this. If you've ever, I mean, I'm sure you've purchased insurance in your life. Um, uh, Business insurance is like this. Um, Life insurance is like this. Uh, Although I would say life insurance is more of like a truly a means to an end um, in some scenarios. But all types of insurance basically is like, okay, you know, when, when and if something does happen, we've got your back and here's you know, like current you and future you are going to be so happy that you did this. Um, At least that's what they convince you. Whether or not it actually fulfills that promise, different podcast episode. But yeah, so that is really the differences between painkiller versus vitamin. And why you should care is ultimately because if you're going to market as a painkiller, but customers see you as a vitamin, we are not going to convert people in the way that we thought we would. Probably not going to see any conversions. It's going to fall flat. It's going to be a mess. But uh, if you do have alignment there, things are going to go pretty good. I mean, it's not like, you know, it's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go well. Um, but if you really nail it and you're truly a painkiller for these customers, but you're a vitamin for these customers, you are going to win both audiences and it's going to be amazing. And there's all kinds of different ways that you can do that, obviously. Um, but that's really what we, want, what we want to make sure that we close the gap on. And then, of course, if your product is actually a vitamin and you've been thinking you're a painkiller this whole time, whoa, reposition, update the messaging, change all of your campaigns. Like there's so many different ways to uh, to position yourself if you truly are a vitamin. Now, do I think that's going to be probably rare? Yes. Um, but again, it's going to go case by case. Okay. Thank you so much again for listening. I hope that that was helpful. Painkillers versus vitamins. It's in the eye of the beholder, which is your customer. And also the way that we go to market and message is going to fundamentally change based off of whether we're solving a pain for someone or whether we are selling a better future version of themselves or filling a deep desire that they have. All right. Thanks again. Have a good one. And until next time, bye y'all. As always, thank you so much for spending this time with me. To learn more about how to reach your growth goals for your SaaS business, head on over to demandmaven.io. You'll find all kinds of free resources, articles, and content. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next one.